Well, hello once again. How are you doing tonight? I hope everybody out there is doing well in spite of. I always say in spite of because the enemy is always trying to do something to try to disrupt us, to get us off track. But we got to declare God's will and God's purpose in spite of the circumstances. So welcome to another Field of Fire Live broadcast. We thank you for taking the time to view with us tonight. And those of you that are around the world, those my, my, our partners, our friends, our prayer warriors down in Texas, our prayer warriors out in Kansas. Glory to God down in Florida, brother. Glad to have you all with me tonight and wherever you're joining us from in Jesus' name. Our sister in Pennsylvania, glad to have you tonight. And we pray that the word of God will be rich as always and it will be building up and strengthening to our hearts, our soul, our spirit, soul, and body. You know, because God's concerned about the whole human body. He's concerned about us wholly. That is spirit, soul, and body. And, and we're on a series concerning uh, uh, what, what, what the Bible says about food and health. Now, we're going to stay with that tonight, and we believe we're going to take it just a little bit further. I believe the Holy Spirit's going to have, have, the, have us spoon-fed in this a little bit, and then he's going to give us what he wants us to have. So we gotta, we're going to go into this subject kind of gradually because we know it's an area that has not been tapped. We know it's an area that's very challenging. You see, and unless unless we're challenged, folks, we're not going to grow. Unless we're challenged, we're not going to be better. Because whenever we're challenged by the word of God is to bring us to a place that we be better and we fulfill the will of God. And anything that I tell you, I tell you to help you. Amen. So I'm not here to, to try to hurt anybody. I'm not here to try to uh, try to t t uh, just, just manipulate or control anything. But whatever I teach is th for the purpose of benefiting God's people. Amen. Because because I always use the word of God as my foundation and I always will use the word of God. But there's so many things that we need to know. And I believe this area of health, nutrition and getting back to God's plan of eating. I believe this is a very important factor in the power and the glory of God being manifested through his people. So we're going to see that from the word tonight. And, and, and now we're in the series on the benefits or, or what the Bible says about food and health. This is our theme what the Bible says about food and health. And I gave you sort of an overview in our Thursday night teaching, and we're going to uh, 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 eventually hit those areas and open up those areas and help us to understand really how important this is. Because I do believe this is an area that's been overlooked. It's an area that's been neglected, and the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and God's leaders have not focused on this area, but I believe this is an end-time revelation that God wants his people to get, to understand, and to operate in, not just know it, but operate in it, amen, because if we operate in this, we'll be healthy, we'll, we'll, we'll receive that long life that he promised us and showed us his salvation, you see, because we have a part in us obtaining that long life. You know, God's just not going to dump it on us. We've got some, some things we have to do. Amen. And if we're going to walk in, because everything that God promises us is conditional. Amen. In other words, God says, you do this and I'll do that. Amen. Okay. So we're going to go into it tonight and we believe that the spirit of God is going to bless us. So get your pad, your pencil, your highlight, and let's write down some things, take some notes, because this is very important because God is, I believe he's adding a missing puzzle piece. And this could be one of the final missing puzzle pieces to God's getting us ready for the outpouring of his spirit, to getting us ready so that he can download into us the glory, the power like never before. Because because when, once we, we, we've established the fact that we're in this glory zone, and folks, in this glory zone is wisdom, revelation, understanding, and all that we need is in the glory zone. So thank God for that. So we pray tonight that you'll be enriched, you'll be blessed and strengthened by the word tonight. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, for ordaining this time and sending this word to heal us and to deliver us. Father, I pray right now that your people have an open heart to understand, uh, an open mind to receive and a willingness to do tonight. Oh God, that, you, that we'll overcome our flesh, we'll overcome tradition, we'll be able to break the paradigms of the past and we'll move into what you will have us to know and do in order to take care of our bodies, your temple, in Jesus' name. And we claim a harvest. We claim a harvest of strong believers. We claim a harvest of obedient believers. We claim a harvest of be believers who will be challenged, but stand up to the challenge and say, yes, Lord, I will obey. 
And God, that you be glorified and also we claim a harvest of souls tonight because this is what it's all about to bring the loss into the kingdom. You be glorified in Jesus' name. So tonight, we're going we're gonna to continue with this subject from the theme. Now, this is our theme, what the Bible says about food and health. Now, now this is the area that a lot, of, a lot of leaders probably don't think it's too spiritual, don't think it's necessary, but it's very important, very necessary that we understand and we operate in, not just understand, but operate in what the Bible says about food and health. You see, because the Bible says to us, the word God says to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, around verse 16, don't you, don't, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God dwells in us. And if any man defiles the temple of God, him will God destroy. So we got to know that our bodies are the temple of God. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit and God wants to dwell in us and he wants us not to corrupt his temple. Amen. And, and I believe what we've done and I'm guilty myself. I've repented of and I'll continue to repent. God, forgive me for corrupting your temple. You say, what do you mean corrupting his temple? By putting the wrong food in my body. I've put the wrong food in my body for several years and the Holy Spirit has really opened it up to me that, that, that the change must come in this hour in order for the glory and the power of God to come. You see, because personally, I'll give you a little bit of my story. I ate traditionally, I ate the standard American diet the majority of my life. When I say the standard American diet, you know, you eat just like your family ate. You eat just like your, your parents taught you to eat. You eat just like your ancestors uh, taught us to eat taught us to eat but but God is opening up to me personally that I had to change the way I was eating amen and and I started this journey about three about four years ago I started eating plant-based food I'm, in other words plant was the center of my meal but at the same time I was eating plant-based I was still eating the, the dairy products, I was still eating the processed sugar, I was still eating uh, the meat products and, and the fish, the chicken and all of that. And, and now what the Holy Spirit is bringing, bringing me to now, he said, now that you have established eating plant-based and I've been eating plant-based, I've been eating salads, I mean salads, green vegetables for the last almost four and a half years. Steady, you can ask my wife, she'll tell you. I, I, eat, I can eat salad every meal and been doing it for the, about the last four and a half years. But now the Holy Spirit is showing me, he has revealed to me, now you have to cut out some things. Now you've added the plant-based uh, food, which is the fruits and vegetables. He said, now you're still not there, Rufus. He said, you got to cut out, you got to cut out the, the, the sugars, the processed sugars. You got to cut out the dairy products and you got to cut out the meats. So I made a decision. I said, okay, Lord, if this is your will, I'll do it. And boy, I'm telling you, when I that that the first two weeks that I didn't eat any, I didn't take in any meat in my body. Boy, it was just like I was just like a drug addict going through withdrawals. Man, I see visions of chicken wings. Man, I tell you, I mean, I'm telling you that it, it's you see because food, the wrong food, can be addicting. The wrong food can be addicting. And we're going to look into the wrong food here in the, in the days to come. We're going to look into uh, why we should not eat meat. Amen. Yes, I said why we should not eat meat, and why we should not eat dairy products, and why we should not e e eat processed sugars. Amen. Because all these things are addicting and they bring cravings. You know, I have recently met a guy in the supermarket yesterday, and uh, I, we was in the produce section because when I go to the supermarket, that's the that's the only, just about the only place I go is the produce section. And he was he was buying he was buying some uh, cilantro and he was buying parsley and he was buying broccoli and all this healthy stuff. He said, "Yeah, man." He said, "I got to get back. I got to get my body back in shape." He said because uh, uh, I, I've been really been having some health problems, and, and I find out that eating eating uh, vegetables and fruit is the best way to go. He said, but you know, I have a problem with sugar. He said, I just, I just, I, I just can't get away from eating the sweets. And, and I told him, I said, don't you know, sugar is addicting. Sugar is just like a drug. And we got to make a decision. We're going to overcome that addiction to sugar. A amen. So you got to make a decision. You're going to start. But you see, I was still eating. I'm going to get back to my story. I was still eating the plant, I was still eating the, the, the processed sugars, and I say processed sugars because processed sugars and sugars and fruit is very different. Amen. Processed sugars is bad, but sugar and fruit is good. Why? Because the sugar and fruit has the fiber. Processed sugar has no fiber. I was still eating the processed sugars. I was still eating the dairy products. Amen. I was eating the dairy products. Yeah, ice cream. Yeah, ice cream. Who scream? You scream. I and ice cream. Amen. I was still eating the ice cream. I was still eating the, 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 the cheese the yogurt 
and, and, and every now and then I'd get a milkshake if I wanted it. But all of that stuff, the Holy Spirit showed me, it has to go. You have to cut that out. And I was still eating the meat. I was still eating meat. I was still eating uh, uh, every now and then. I'd eat a piece of ribs every now and then. Very seldom the beef, but but the chicken and the fish and 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 the pro and the and the uh, animal protein, uh, eggs and all that stuff. The Holy Spirit said all of it has to go. Amen. Why? Because eating plant based has many benefits. Eating plant based, which is eating the way God wants us to eat, is connected to our spiritual power. It's connected to the anointing upon our lives. It's connected to the wisdom of God. It's connected to the knowledge of God. It's connected to the revelation of dreams and visions. Hey, amen. It's all connected to what we eat, folks. Amen. Now, if you want to be a uh, uh, carry the anointing, be a carrier of the glory, demonstrate the power of God, operate in the gifts of the Spirit, make a decision, you're going to get back to God's plan for eating. Amen. Get back to God's way uh, uh, of taking care of your body by eating a plant-based diet. So tonight, we're going to use for the subject, the benefits of eating a plant-based diet. The benefits of eating a plant-based diet, I, I would say minus the meat, the dairy, and the processed sugar. But uh, this use for a subject tonight, eating the benefits of eating a plant-based plant diet. Now, we're going to look at this from, from the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel is very important in, in, in concerning this subject because Daniel is a good example. He's a good represent, representation of the benefits of a person who would eat a plant-based diet. Now, Daniel's, Daniel's, Daniel, Daniel and his friends, right? So Daniel and his friends, which was Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, I want you to turn your Bible to Daniel chapter 1. We're going to start in Daniel chapter 1. Then we're going to go some other places tonight. Come on, somebody tell the Lord thank you tonight. Oh, Father, we thank you. Daniel chapter 1 is where we're going to launch this from tonight. We believe the Spirit of God is going to teach us. He's going to show us some things that we really need to know. And he's going to show us the benefits of eating a plant-based diet. In other words, having plants, that which is fruits and vegetables, as the heart of what we eat. Amen? Why? Because we're going. that's going back to how God originally intended for man to eat. And in Genesis 1.29, God told Adam, I've given you every uh, herb-bearing seed and every tree that bears fruit for your food. Amen. So in Genesis 129, God laid down the eating plan for, for, for Adam, which is the eating plan for all, all mankind. Now, now in Genesis 129, God did not mention meat. He did not mention, he did not mention uh, dairy products. He did not mention uh he, he, he did not mention uh, processed sugars. Now, I'm going to go back to Genesis. The Holy Spirit just told me, turn to Genesis and read it because somebody might be, you might be, uh, uh, lack some understanding here. Now, uh, 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 this is going to help clear some things up. Genesis 129. Now, this is what God originally wanted man to eat. And God was speaking to man when man was in the supernatural realm. In other words, he was speaking to the spirit of Adam. He was speaking to the spirit man. Why? Because Adam, Adam and Eve were not created. Uh, 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 well, say Adam was not created until Genesis 2:7. That's when God put him on the earth. Adam did not hit the earth till Genesis 2:7. But now here in Genesis chapter one and verse 29, I'll, I'll say verse 27. It said God created man in His own image. And in the image of God created he a male and female. Now, that's the creation of man. Man was first created a spirit being. You and I were first created a spirit being before we became physical. Now, Genesis 127 is the spiritual creation of man as a spirit being. Amen. But that's why the spirit of man is the real man. And that's why God is concerned about, and we showed in your last teaching from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, that God said, I want your whole spirit soul and body to be, preserved, to, be, to be preserved blameless. So God is concerned about the spirit, soul, and body. You and I are spirit, soul, and body. Adam was a spirit man before, we, before he became a physical man. Now, Genesis 127, God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he, him, male and female. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living creeping thing that every every living thing that moveth upon the uh, upon the earth. 
Now in verse verse 29, Genesis 1, 29, here's where God gives gave Adam his food before he became a physical man. He told Adam what he wanted him to eat before Adam became a physical being on the earth. You see, what God wanted Adam to do, he told him before he created him. In other words, this is what was most important to God. God put it in Adam in the beginning or in the, in the outset of his creation. And in verse 29, God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree, which is the, which is in which is the fruit yielding fruit, fruit, fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. Now this word meat here is food. The word should be really food. But don't think, don't think that God says Adam is supposed to eat meat. No, because the word meat really means his food. A amen. You see, because his God referred to his food as his meat. But it, that, now that, that, that's not saying God said we're supposed to eat meat. Because here God tells him, he says, I'm giving you every herb bearing seed which is we would consider as fruit as fruit and vegetables herb bearing fruit upon the face of the earth and every tree which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed it shall be for your food or for your meat now i don't want you to get caught up on the fact that he said he's the word meat is used here in the old king james a lot of the modern translations use the word food so uh, some, some, somebody might say, well, God says, here he says, Adam's supposed to eat meat. No, no, he wasn't saying that. And we're going to see later on as we go through with the teaching tonight that God intended man not to be a meat eater, not to be a, 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 a not to be carnivorous. I believe that's the term carnivorous. In other words, uh, one who eats meat or uh, one who tears flesh with his teeth, uh, teeth. Uh, God did not intend that. And you see, in the beginning, God also intended for the animals to eat plants. Look at verse 30. And every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, there in his life I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. Now here's that word meat again. It really means food. In other words, he, he, he's, he's not saying he wanted animals to eat meat. He didn't say he wanted the birds to eat meat. He didn't want the creeping things to eat meat. He said he wanted them uh, every, every, uh, every green herb for their food. Okay, so the animals, God intended for even the animals to eat uh, uh, planet, uh, plants or plant-based. Amen? You, you see, because of the fall uh, man became carnivorous. Uh, I think that's the term, in other words, wanting to eat meat. But in the original beginning, in the beginning, in the creation, God wanted Adam to have a plant-based diet. There are benefits to eating a plant-based diet. Amen. We're going to look at that tonight. Amen. You see, because what God intended in the beginning, in the very outset of creation, that's God's best for us, folks. I said, that's God's best for us. And what God wants us to do is to get back to that. Amen. He's bringing us back to that. I, I see you You have not stumbled on this program, on, on this teaching tonight by, by an invitation or an accident. This is a divine appointment. There's some things that God wants us to know and, they, and let us know there's some changes we got to make. Amen. I made the decision to make the changes. I made the decision to cut out the dairy products. I made the decision to cut out the meat. That means the, the, the chicken, the fish, amen, the, the pork, uh, uh, the, the beef. Cut it out of my diet. Amen. Why? Because there are benefits to eating just a plant-based diet. Now, 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 we, now, now, go with me to Daniel. Now we can go to Daniel. I had to lay this foundation, you see, because God is getting us back to the original intent. Why? Because God is restoring everything back how it was in Genesis before Adam and Eve sinned. He's restoring everything back to the original intent. And that includes the way he initially told man to eat. Now, I know a lot of you are probably saying, well, the Bible says we can eat fish. The Bible says we can eat chicken. The Bible says we can eat clean meats. Let me tell you something, folks. One of the reasons that I have, I have, I have I've ceased to not eat any meat, number one, is because the original intent of God was that that man eat no meat, at man eat no flesh. That was the original intent. God is restoring everything back to the original intent. Okay, number two reason why I've made the decision to change. Number one is it is to obey God. Amen. It's an obedience to God. Number two is because the way meat is processed today, folks, it's not like it was 
100 or 200 years ago. 200 years ago and further back, even all the way back to the Bible times, the animals were, were, were grass-fed. They were truly grass-fed. In other words, they were they were they ate plants uh, and they, they they ate off the land. They did not eat meat. Uh, other words, they they were truly grass fed. And, and today, animals, the, the 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 meat that they have in the grocery store came from animals that were fed chemicals, that were fed uh, growth hormones, that were fed pesticides in their food. And, and, and a lot of times you you think you think you getting you getting grass fed beef is not grass fed beef. What they do, what they've done, and I've studied this and I've researched it. And I've studied some 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 plant based doctors under some plant based doctors that have really revealed some things to me that I want to help you with tonight. When they a lot of times when they say plant based, uh, or not plant based, but grass fed, it means they fed the cow with chemicals, growth hormones pesticides in their food for most of the cow's life and they take the cow away from that and for the last month just before they slaughter the cow they put them in a pasture and they let the cow eat grass for about a month then they slaughter the cow and they say that cow is grass fed the majority of what that cow ate was chemicals growth hormones uh, pesticides in their food to cause them to grow quick and cause them to grow fast so that the meat producers can make the money off the cow no, no, and a lot of what we call, what they call wild caught, you know what wild caught, wild caught fish a hundred years ago was truly wild caught fish. In other words, the wild caught fish, they ate of the algae of the sea, they ate of other sea creatures, and they did not eat all of this, all of these chemicals that they're dumping into the ocean, all these chemicals that are dumping into the rivers, all of the sewage that's being dumped into the rivers. Today, even with the food that we get out of the store is contaminated. Amen. I have to tell you the truth. You see, because it's going to be the truth that's going to make us free. Because about 100, 200 years ago, and even all the way back to the Bible days, the food was safe. Meat was safe. Today, meat is not safe to eat. Fish is not safe to eat. Why? Because of the uh, of the sewage that's dumped into the ocean, the sewage that's dumped into the rivers. A amen. The, the cruise ship dumped their sewage out at sea, and the fish eat all of that. Uh, these hospitals are dumping a lot of their a lot of their waste products into the rivers, into the seas. Uh, uh, otherwise, a lot of our septic system empty out into the into the rivers and ocean, and the fish eat all that stuff. And if we eat the fish that eat that eat sewage, then we get the sewage in us. Ah, that's gross. I know it is, but it's the truth. Hey, amen. You see, this is another reason why I've gotten away from eating even fish. Even me, I, and I, I still love to eat salmon, man. I tell you, love some salmon. But because of the way they raise the salmon, and especially farm-raised salmon, one of the worst kind of, uh, of food, food fish you could eat is farm-raised salmon. Uh, do this for me. I gave this to uh, our team on this past Sunday. Go to YouTube and when you get a chance and put in what the health it's a documentary documentary on how they produce the food it's called what the health and i didn't say what the hell i said what the h-e-a-l-t-h -E you look that up and you can see how this food is produced you see this is one of the reasons why i've gotten away from eating plant uh, uh, uh by what got away from eating eating meat which is fish chicken amen and even eggs amen because it's all animal protein now now let's look into why Eating a plant-based diet is so beneficial. And there are spiritual connotations, there are spiritual benefits, there are physical benefits to eating a plant-based diet. The benefits of eating a plant-based diet. Now in Daniel, Daniel chapter 1. Come on, somebody tell the Lord, thank you tonight. Hallelujah. I know this is challenging. I know this is demanding. I know this is this is like twisting your arm. It's like pulling teeth that you don't want to come out of your mouth. Amen. Because once we've been eating eating the way we've been eating for so many years, it's just hard to break that paradigm. But you got to make a decision. I said you got to make a decision. The hardest thing about this is making the decision to do it. And you can do it. I said you can do it. You see, because this is what God wants us to get back to. Now, in Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. Boy, this is powerful here tonight, man. I'm telling you, this is going to be eye-opening to you. Daniel chapter 1. I'm using my book tonight. I got my device, but I'm going to use the book tonight. Amen. And then Daniel chapter 1 is where we're going to launch from tonight. Talking about the benefits of eating a plant-based diet. Now, Daniel, Daniel and his friends, Daniel and his friends. I said Daniel and his friends. Daniel, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were exiled 
uh, into Babylon. In other words, they were captured from Jerusalem. The king of Babylon went into Jerusalem, ransacked the city. He took the best of everything that, the, that was in the city of Jerusalem, and he took the best people. He took the, he took the youngest, he took the strongest, he took what he thought was the wisest people, and he brought them into Babylon because he wanted them to serve in his kingdom. Now, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were, were four young men who the king captured and brought to Babylon. Now, when you get to Daniel chapter 1, and uh, when they when they on arrival into Babylon, the king made a, made, a, made, a, made a law, or he made an order, he sent out an order to those who were over the captives who came from Jerusalem, or who was over Daniel and his friends, he said, tell these guys, I want them to eat my food. I want them to drink my wine. I want them to eat the way I want them to eat. Now, on arrival, when they came in, the king wanted to change the way these guys ate and what they ate. The king wanted them to eat what he wanted them to eat because now the king had already captured them physical, physically. He already imprisoned them physically. Now he wants to imprison them mentally. He wants to imprison them spiritually. And he wants to imprison their attitude to bring, it, bring them totally under his control. How was he going to do that? He already had captured them physically. Now he wants to capture them mentally. He wants to capture them spiritually. And he was going to do it through feeding them the food he wanted them to eat. Okay, now let's pick it up with Daniel chapter 1 and verse 5. And he says, and the king, now I'm going to take my time with this tonight, and, and we're going to look at the benefits because what, what God did through Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will benefit us. The way he dealt with them will benefit us if we obey and we make the decision that we're not going to eat the king's food. Amen. You see, the truth of the matter is, folks, we've been eating the king's food. And I'm using the king as an analogy here because the king wanted them to eat the way he wanted them to eat so he can control them. So he controlled them spiritually, he controlled them mentally, and he controlled their attitude, their choices, and, and their decision-making. Food has a lot to do with our decision-making, folks. And I'll show you that from the word before we close tonight. Okay, now and I, I said, uh, verse 5, Daniel chapter 1 and verse 5. And the king point, appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat. Now, hear that word meat again. It doesn't mean meat like steak or, or ribs or anything. It means food. He appointed them a portion of the king's food. A better word would be food. Some of the new translations use the word food. Okay. And of the wine which he drank. So nourishing them three years. And at the end thereof, they might stand before the king. Okay, so he had appointed what he wanted them to eat. And they were to eat this, these meals for three years. So he figured after three years, this food would have got into their mind. It would have got into their body. And I would have them under my control. Okay, so he wanted them to eat like he wanted them to eat. You see, folks, we've been eating the way the world wants us to eat. We've been eating the way our, our ancestors wanted, wanted us to eat. And, 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 and that's why a lot of us have contracted diabetes. We've contracted heart, heart disease, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and all this other stuff. Because we've been eating the king's food. Now, I'm using the king as an analogy of the standard American diet. Amen. And the standard American diet, the acronym is SAD. Amen. We've been eating that sad diet, that standard American diet, and that's what's got us in sickness, disease, cancer, and a lot of these other things. But God wants us to get back to the original plan of eating that God ordained for Adam and that he ordained for Daniel and his friends. Okay, so verse 5 lets us know the king wanted to feed them his way for three years. He said, now among these, verse 6, among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuch gave names, gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar, and to, Az and to Hanani he gave uh, of Shadrach, and to Mishael Meshach, and to Azariah Abednego. Abednego. Now this is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So you see, when the king brought them to Babylon, he changed their names. He changed their names into Babylonian names. Not only did he change their names, he wanted to change their eating habits. 
He wanted to change their eating habits. So that's what has happened, folks. The enemy has changed our eating habits from what God originally, originally intended us uh, to, to eat and to put in our body. You see, the enemy, I say the enemy because this is Satan's plan. This world system is, is this world system is under, in the lap of the wicked one. <laughs> Amen. And this standard American diet is just like the king's diet that he wanted to change them to. Okay, so, 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 uh, at verse 8, Daniel 1 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the, with the purpose, with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuch that he might not defile himself. Okay, so now Daniel knew the dietary laws of God. Daniel knew what God intended for him and his friends to eat. Daniel knew what was, what was mentioned. E evidently in Genesis, he knew what was mentioned in, in Leviticus. He knew what was mentioned in Deuteronomy 14. In other words, the things and the food that God wanted us to eat and the things that God wanted us not to eat. Daniel was well aware of this. You see, Daniel was a student of the scriptures. He was a student of the writing of, of Moses because Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, which is called the Pentateuch. And in there is God's dietary plan or God's eating plan for man. Daniel was familiar with that. So Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. Daniel made the, the decision, I am not eating that bad food. Folks, and what God is saying to us, we got to make that the same decision. We, You, you and I got to make that, the same, that same decision. See, I'm the first partaker. I'm not going to tell you to do something I'm not going to do. I already made the decision. I'm cutting it out, man. I'm not eating no more of the king's meat. I repented for eating the king's food. Why? Because, because uh, it, it, it brings sickness, disease, and it inhibits it, 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 it disrupts God's ability to communicate with us. Okay, we're going to see that in just a little bit. Okay, Daniel purpose in his heart. Daniel purpose in his heart. See, you got a purpose in your heart. Other words, you got to make your mind up. I said you got to make your mind up that you're not going to defy yourself by eating the king's food. That's what Daniel did. And you see, and, and the Bible says, our bodies is the temple of the Holy Spirit. If anybody, any man defile the temple of the Holy Spirit, him will God destroy. Amen. That's 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Amen. So what we've been doing, folks, we've been defiling God's temple by putting the wrong and the king's food in our body. Daniel purposed in his heart. Daniel purposed in his heart. Daniel purposed in his heart. You and I, you got the purpose in your heart tonight. Amen. That you're not going to, you're going to stop defiling yourself. You got to stop defiling yourself with that ice cream. Stop defiling yourself with that with, with that cow's milk. Stop defiling yourself with, 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 with those ribs and steaks and, and hamburgers and all that stuff. Why? Because that's not what God intends us to eat. You got purpose in your heart. Daniel purpose in his heart that he would not defile himself, nor with the king's portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he questioned of the eunuch that he might not defile himself. So, okay, so Daniel went to the guy that was over them and said, I made my mind up. I'm not going to eat that food. I'm not going to eat that king's food. Now, uh, 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 verse 9. Now, God had brought Daniel, verse 9, Daniel 1, 9. Now, God had brought Daniel unto favor and to tender and to tender love with the prince of the eunuch. And the prince of the eunuch said unto Daniel, I fear my lord, the king, who hath appointed your meat. And that word meat is food. I got to keep saying this because some, some folks see the word meat and you think God's telling you to eat meat. No, he said that, that, that appointed your food or your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall he make, then shall you make me in danger of my head to the king. Other words, uh, other words, this, this guy that was over them, the prince of the eunuch said, Daniel, if I let you eat the way you want to eat, and the king find out, my head will roll. Other words, I can lose my life, Daniel, if, if, I, if I let you eat the way you want to eat. And, and, and so Daniel said unto Melzer, Daniel said, I'll make a deal with you. He said, I'll make a deal with you. Daniel said, Ch Ch Daniel said check this out. Verse 11, Daniel said unto Melzer, whom the prince, whom the prince of the eunuch had, had set over Daniel, Hanai, and Mishael, and Azariah. Prove thy servants, I, pr I beseech thee, ten days, I beseech thee ten days, let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Now, pulse is things that are planted. Things that are planted. Pulse refers to beans, fruits, vegetables, fruit. Anything that's planted is concerned is considered as pulse. So Daniel said, "Let us let them give us pulse to eat, which is things that are planted, and water to drink. In other words, just give us vegetables, fruit, and water. 
vegetables, fruit, and water is what Daniel requested because that's the original eating plan that God has ordained for mankind. Did it all the way back in the book of uh, book of Genesis, Genesis 1, uh, 129, 129 through 27. So Daniel re resorts back to God's original plan and God's original diet for man. In other words, Daniel didn't say, let, 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 let me eat some fruits and some vegetables and let me have a piece of ribs. He didn't say, let me eat some fruits and vegetables and let me have some chicken wings. He didn't say, let me eat some fruits and vegetables and let me have a piece of salmon or a piece of fish. No, all he wanted was fruits, vegetables, and water. That's the original eating plan, okay? So so he, he says, he said, give us, uh, give us water to drink. Give us water to drink. That's the original eating plan. No meat, no dairy, no sugar. Okay, all right, verse 13. And let our countenance be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servant. In other words, let us eat what we want to eat. For just 10 days, don't take three years, don't take three years. Just let us eat what God told us to eat for three for 10 days. Come on, say 10 days. You do this for 10 days, you will see a difference. Okay? Uh, and, and he says, he said, he said, after 10 days, come and check us out. Come in 10 days, come and check us out. Come and check us our sharpness. Come and check out our skill level. Come and check out our wisdom. Come and check out our skin and how our skin glows and, 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 and how the sharpness of our mind. He said, he, he said, then deal with thy servant. Okay? Uh, and, and the Bible says in verse 14, so he consented to them in, in this matter and proved them 10 days. In other words, you know, brother, he didn't let the king know. Amen. He did not let the king know what he was doing, that he had consented to Daniel. Why? Because the king could, 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 could cut his head off. Amen. He could lose his life. So he consented and he let Daniel and them eat the way they wanted to eat for 10 days. So, 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 so he consented, verse 14, with them and this man, and he proved them 10 days. And at the end of the 10, of, of the end of of 10 days, their countenance was fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children that did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melza took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse, and no doubt he gave them water to drink. In other words, when he saw that these guys look better, they, were, they look healthier, they, they were sharper, Amen, amen, that the people that ate the king's food, that ate the bad food, he took away what the king said for them to eat. Otherwise, he didn't care what the king said. He said, this guy, he said, what Daniel said has proven to be better. Why? Because they look better. They, 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 they sound better. In other words, they're healthier than the people that was eating the portion of the king's food. Now, now Daniel and his friends were at a crossroads. No doubt this was the king's rule for everybody that was taken captive from Babylon. I believe that there were many others that were captured from Jerusalem. They gave in and they went on and ate the king's food. They went on and drank the king's wine. And at the end of, the, at the end of this 10 day period, Daniel and his friends looked better than all of them that did not hold to God's eating plan. Okay, and verse, verse 17. Now look at verse 17. Now here we start looking at these benefits now. Now these are benefits that you and I should want. Amen. These are benefits that you and I should desire like never before. Okay. Okay. And for these four children, Daniel 1.17. Look at this with me here tonight. And for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and in dreams. In other words, God gave them supernatural knowledge. God gave them skill. In other words, if their, their, their natural skill, whether it was music or crafts or whatever, their skill level even was better. Their knowledge was better. Learning, uh, skill in all learning and in wisdom, they were wiser. Amen. And, and the Bible says, and Daniel had understanding in all dreams and in visions. In other words, because they did not give in to eat the way the king wanted them to eat, they refused to eat the king's food. Their knowledge level was higher. Their skill level was greater. Their wisdom was greater. Amen. Amen. Their wisdom was, was greater than all the people that ate the king's food. The benefits of eating a plant-based diet. 
is that God will give you knowledge. God will give you skill. He will increase your skill. He'll increase your wisdom. He will increase even Daniel had understanding in visions and in dreams. I see here, folks, the gifts of the Spirit of the night, the revelation gifts of the Holy Spirit went to another level when Daniel refused to eat that bad food. When Daniel refused to eat that bad food, God enhanced the spiritual abilities that Daniel and his friends had. They, 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 they gave, God gave them knowledge. Why? Because God was well pleased because they were obedient to God and they did not obey and they did not take the herd mentality and ran with the herd. You see, folks, in this hour, we can't run with the herd. Amen. The herd is eating the king's food. The herd is eating, is eating the standard American diet. God is pulling us away from the standard American diet. Why? Because he wants to increase our knowledge our knowledge of supernatural things, our knowledge of the Word of God, our knowledge of life, our knowledge of our own self, our knowledge of who God is, our knowledge of the Holy Spirit, our knowledge of miracle signs and wonders, our knowledge of the power of God. All the knowledge will be increased when we get back to eating what God wants us to eat. Not only that, knowledge, it was wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to use knowledge. You see, we need these benefits, folks, we need these, you see, these are spiritual benefits that come with eating a plant-based diet. Okay? Uh, he said, uh, uh, verse 18, Daniel 1, 18. Now, at the end of, of the days that the king had said, uh, he, he should bring them in. He should bring them in. Then the prince of the eunuchs brought them before Nebuchadnezzar. Now, he's bringing them before the king. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, therefore stood there before the king. In other words, the king said, I had never seen no, no guys look like you all. In other words, you all look better. In other words, in other words you, you, you look nicer. You probably even, they probably even smelled nice. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. In all manners of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the musicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued until the first year of King Cyrus. But what, what, was the, what was the difference? The food. I said the difference was the food that Daniel and his friends ate over and above what the rest of the people ate. And they were wiser. They had more wisdom. They had more knowledge. They had more skill. And they were sharper in everything that concerned them. But it was connected to the food that Daniel and, and his friends choose to eat. See, Daniel was like the leader. Daniel was, was exceptional. God had a special call on, on Daniel's life. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was just like Daniel's helpers, just his assistant. And, 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 and because Daniel made the decision as the leader, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego followed Daniel. And they too reaped the benefits that Daniel received. They all were wiser. They all had more knowledge. They all were had more skill. And, they, and Daniel was given the ability to understand and discern dreams and visions. Folks, I see the revelation gifts being connected to us going back to eating a plant-based diet. The revelation gifts, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the discerning of spirits are all connected to us going back to eating a plant-based diet. You see, because I do believe, I, I believe and I believe with all my heart because now I, I made the decision. I'm cutting out the meats. I'm cutting out the dairy. I'm cutting out the processed sugars. I'm cutting out the white flour and all of this stuff that I've been eating with the plants, plant-based diet, cutting all that out. I declare that the anointing upon my life, my revelation, my wisdom, my knowledge, my understanding of dreams and visions I'm about to go to another level. Glory to God. Why? Because I'm, I've resorted back to just how Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego ate. And I believe we and I will receive the benefits that they receive. Folks, we've got to get back to eating a plant-based diet. Don't you want more of the wisdom of God? Don't you want more of the knowledge of God? Don't you want more revelation of the word of God? Hallelujah. And I contribute the revelation that God gives me is because I made a decision to go back to eating the way God wants me to eat. And folks, if he did it for Daniel, he'll do it for us. But folks, we got to get back to how God wants us to eat because there are many benefits 
than eating a plant-based diet. Now, now I, I, want, I want to look at something here, a prophecy concerning Jesus, a prophecy concerning Jesus and what God said that he was supposed to eat. Now, I want to go to Isaiah, Isaiah, and we're going to come back to Daniel in just a little bit. I want to go to Isaiah chapter 7, Isaiah chapter 7, and let's look at verses 14 and 15. Isaiah chapter 7, and let's start with verse number 14. Isaiah 7, 14. Now, now the connection between, what we're going to look at is the connection between eating how God wants us to eat and the ability for us to make right choices and right decisions. Now, Isaiah 7, 14. Said the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, this is the prophecy concerning Jesus Christ, who was the Messiah. Yeah, the, the virgin shall conceive. You know, he was born of a virgin. And the Bible says, name shall be called Emmanuel. You know, Matthew chapter 1 mentions, he shall be called Emmanuel, named God with us. Now, Genesis, uh, uh, Isaiah 7, 14. But look at, look at verse 15. Isaiah 7, 15. Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Now, what the Messiah was told to eat was connected to his ability to, to, choose, the, to choose the good and refuse the evil. That he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good is connected to what God told him to eat. Now, now we can't say, I, 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 we, we should never say, well, I want to eat the way Jesus ate. We could not eat the way Jesus ate. And a lot of folks say, well, well, Jesus ate fish. Didn't he eat fish after he was resurrected? Sure, he ate fish after he was resurrected. But let me tell you something. Jesus was not teaching us nutrition. He was teaching his disciples that he was real and that he had a body that could eat food just like them. He was not teaching us nutrition. He was not teaching us what to eat when he ate that piece of fish in the upper room. He was teaching us that he was real and he could—he had a body that he could that, that he could eat food. But what he says here, uh, verse 15, he says, butter and honey shall he eat. You say, well, Jesus ate fish. Well, you think you can live off of butter and honey just because Jesus was told to eat butter and honey? No, you couldn't live off of, he said, butter and honey. No, no, no I couldn't live off of eating but, butter and honey. You see, because, but this is the diet that God has designed, had designed for the Messiah. And I believe Jesus followed this diet. <laughs> Amen. I believe he ate more than butter and honey, but this was to be a part of his diet. And the Bible says the, the reason he wanted the Messiah to eat the way he wanted him to eat, so he could refuse the evil and choose the good. Food is connected to our choices. What we eat is connected to us making the right or wrong choices. You eat the wrong food, you make the wrong choices. You eat the right food, you'll make the right choices. You eat the wrong food, you make bad decisions. You eat the right food, you make good decisions and the right decisions. Food is connected to the choices that we make. And you wonder why a lot of people do some of the things they do? It goes back to the food they eat. What we put in our body affects our brain. What we put in our body affects our mental capacity. And that's why, that's why, that's why eating what we eat is so important. And that's why, that's why we've got to get back to eating the way God wants us to eat. Because when we do that, folks, we gain the blessing and the knowledge and the wisdom and the discernment and the revelation of God like we never knew we could have before. Hallelujah. But Jesus was given a diet here of butter and honey. Amen. He had to eat that which the Father wanted him to eat so because that was connected to the choices that he made. The choices that he would make is connected to him following God's plan for eating for his life. Now, go back with me to Daniel. Now, we know that Daniel and his friends, they refused to eat the king's food. Now, I'm going into, we're going into chapter 2. Let's see how much time we got. Yeah, I got we got some time. We can go into this. And we'll do, we'll give you as much of this as, as, as the Holy Spirit would say give you tonight because this is so important, folks. The connection of our, our spiritual knowledge, our spiritual wisdom, our spiritual understanding is connected to the food that we put in our bodies. Daniel ate fruits and vegetables and drank water, and God enhanced the knowledge. He enhanced the wisdom. He enhanced the understanding of dreams and vision. And he enhanced even the very skill level that Daniel operated in. 
Now, in Daniel chapter 2, now we was looking in Daniel chapter 1. Now, in Daniel chapter 2, we'll see another benefit that comes with Daniel and his friends eating the way God wanted them to eat. In Daniel chapter 2, we see, we find the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. We find the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar had dreamed a dream. The dream went from him. He wanted them to give him, to tell him what he, what the dream was, and he also wanted them to give him the interpretation. Now, he went to his astrologers, he went to his magicians, and he told those guys, I've dreamed a dream to trouble me. Tell me what the dream is and give me the interpretation. They told the king, which is which is no more in common sense. They said, King, you tell us what the dream was and we'll give you the interpretation. He said, I don't remember the dream. And because I don't remember the dream, I want you to tell me what I don't remember. And not only tell me what I don't remember, tell me what it meant. Now, this, is, this, this was too hard for these guys. These guys said, King, you, you, you're asking something that's impossible. He said, not only, he was telling them, not only tell me the dream that I forgot, but tell me what I forgot meant. You know, this, this is crazy. He said, tell me what was, the, what was the meaning of what I forgot. They said, you got to first tell us what you dream. <laughs> he couldn't do it. So as a result of that, I'm going into chapter 2. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Uh, Daniel chapter 2. And let's pick it up here with, 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 with Daniel chapter 2. And around verse, let's see, we start with verse verse number, let's pick up with verse number 5. Daniel 2, 5. Daniel 2, 5. Then answered and said, then the, then the king answered and said to the Chaldeans, the thing is gone from me. If you will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, you shall be cut in pieces and your houses made a dunghill. In other words, if you can't tell me what I dreamed, if you can't tell me what it meant, I'm going to have you guys cut in pieces and your house be your homes be destroyed. Okay, so now, 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 here he's putting something before all of the, all of his, all of his astrologers and his and magicians, uh, and magicians uh, to give him the interpretation. He said, he said, but if you show me the dream, this is Daniel two six. If you show me the dream and the interpretation thereof, you shall receive gifts and rewards and great honor. Uh, therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered and said again, let the king tell his servants the dream. And we will show you the interpretation. The king answered and said, I know of a certainty that you would gain the time because you see the thing is gone from me. Otherwise, I forgot what I dreamt, but I woke up troubled. <laughs> I, I don't know what I dreamt, but I woke up scared. He, he said, but he, he said, but for the thing is gone from me. Verse nine. But if you let me know, uh, let uh, if you make no, if if you will not make known unto me the dream. There is but one decree for you, for you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I will show you that you can show me the interpretation. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's manner. Therefore, there is no king or lord nor ruler that acts such a thing of any magician or astrologer. In other words, they said, King, ain't nobody never asked what you ask it. He said, it's a rare thing that the king requireth, and that there is none that can show it before the king, except the gods who in whom who's dwelling, except the gods, except the gods whose dwelling is not with men. In other words, they, he, he, they, this guy told him, said, King, ain't nobody can tell you what you want to know. He said, that this, this, this is beyond us. He said, except it, it has to come from God whose dwelling is not with men. He, he said, for this cause, the king was angry. Oh, yeah, he's furious. Yeah, he's, 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 he's madder than a hornet right now. For this cause, the king was, was very furious. And, the, and he commanded to destroy all the men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise man should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Now, I'm, 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 I'm saying all of that to, to show to show us tonight that Daniel's ability to discern, to know the dream, to interpret the dream, and to tell the king the dream all goes back to Daniel's willingness 
to not eat the bad food of the king. You see, because it was because of Daniel's decision to eat a plant-based diet and drink water only, God endowed him with the ability of wisdom, knowledge, and revelation of dreams and vision. It goes back to what God told Daniel to eat. Do you see this tonight? Okay, Daniel answered and said, verse 14, Daniel 2, 14, Daniel answered and said with the counsel and uh, with counsel and wisdom to area the captain of the king, which was going forth to slay the, 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 the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to area, and I heard Daniel is talking to him because you see Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were going to be killed also, along with the well, along with the magician and astrologers of, of Babylon. He answered and said to Arioch, this is verse 15, Why is the decree so hastily from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. Then, and, then Daniel went in and, and desired of the king that he would give him time, that he would show the king the interpretation. And Daniel went to his house and made known the thing unto Hanai, Mishael, Azariah, his companion, and they, that they would desire mercy of God, of the God of heaven, concerning the secret that Daniel and his fellows would not perish with the rest of the men of Babylon. In other words, Daniel, when Daniel found out what the king was up to, Daniel went back to his, his buddies. He went back to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and said, Fellas, we got to pray. We got to inquire of the God of heaven of this dream and the interpretation. In other words, they went into prayer. I mean, they, they, they went into inquire of God to have the secret revealed to them. And Daniel was, and then, then it says in verse 19, Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. Uh, which is a dream. A dream is a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. And Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of the God forever, the, the, the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He changes the times and the season. He removeth king and set it up king. He giveth wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Okay, and he revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth in him. He, and Daniel said, I thank thee and praise thee, thou, O God of my fathers, for thou hast given wisdom and who thou hast given wisdom and might, and hast made known unto me now what we desire of thee, for thou hast made known unto us the king's matter. Folks, it goes back. All this goes back to Daniel eating a plant-based diet. Can you see this? all goes back. We're talking about the benefits. I'm talking about revelation of dreams and visions. I'm talking about supernatural understanding. I'm talking about the gifts of the Spirit operating in us. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, the discerning of Spirit. Don't you want that? Is it too much to sacrifice? Hallelujah, that chicken. Is it too much to sacrifice the ice cream? Is it too much to sacrifice the, the ribs, the steak, and all the meats? Is it too much to sacrifice for the wisdom of God? for the knowledge of God, for the revelation of God. Folks, I'm telling you to me, I declare tonight, it's not too much to sacrifice because the benefits outweigh the sacrifice. And because Daniel received the revelation, God revealed to Daniel what was the king's dream and he revealed to Daniel also the interpretation thereof. Now I want to pick it up at Daniel chapter 2, around verse 41. Daniel chapter 2, verse, 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 uh, let's pick it up at verse 44. And now he showed King the image. The, the, the dream showed the image, the image, the big giant, the big statue that the king eventually made that he wanted everybody to bow to. That's what was in the dream. So now Dan, I'll pick it up with Daniel 2.44, just to fast forward here. He said, and in, those, and in these days, in other words, there would be several kingdoms. The, the king saw several kingdoms. He said, and in these days, and the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed. The kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. In other words, Daniel saw the many kingdoms that will come before the kingdom of God being restored back to the earth. He saw the, the Persian kingdom. He saw the Grecian kingdom, which uh, he, he saw the the Greek the Grecian kingdom, which was the Greek uh, the Greeks uh, monarchy that was, was which was headed by Alexander the Great. He saw all these kingdoms that would come upon the upon planet Earth before Jesus would come back and set up His kingdom. What God showed Daniel leads right on up to the time in which we're living today, folks. You see, because he says in these kingdom, he said in these days shall these kings 
uh, shall, shall the God of heaven set up, this is verse 44, Daniel 2, 44, set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And this is the kingdom of God that's coming back to the earth. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. In other words, God showed Daniel that Nebuchadnezzar, you're going to reign for a little while, but your, your kingdom is going to be destroyed. Then he says in verse 45, for as much as thou sawest, and this is, what, this is what King Nebuchadnezzar saw in the dream that he couldn't remember, as thou sawest that a stone was cut out, out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold, the great God hath made known unto the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain and the interpretation sure. In other words, Daniel said, King, they're going to become, they're coming many kingdoms on the earth. Your kingdom will be one of them. But there's coming another kingdom in the end times that's going to destroy your kingdom and all these other kingdoms. And that kingdom was represented as the stone that was cut out the side of a mountain without hands. Now, the stone that was cut out the side of a mountain without hands, Jesus Christ was that stone. Jesus Christ was the stone that the builders rejected. He was the stone that the builders rejected. He was, he was hewn out the side of the mountain. God is the mountain. Hallelujah. Jesus came out of God. And Jesus, as that stone, came out of the mountain that was hewn out without hands. Going back to Isaiah 7, 14, that a virgin shall be conceived, that no man had nothing to do with the birth of Jesus Christ. He was hewn out the side of a mountain without the hands of a man. That same stone would smite this image on the foot and it would, would destroy the kingdoms of men in the last days. And, and, and he, he says, the stone that was cut out the mountain without hands, the, and that they did break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, and the silver, and the gold. The great God of heaven has made known unto the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain and the interpretation sure. Glory to God. God showed Daniel the dream and the interpretation. And the final kingdom upon planet earth would be the kingdom of Babylon. That's the kingdom that's reigning uh, concerning Daniel's dream and vision. That's the kingdom of Babylon. And the Babylonian system is in, an, in, in operation in the earth today. And that system is headed by Roman Catholicism. Amen. And if you go to Revelation chapter 18, 17 and 18, mystery Babylon. Amen. In the last day, Revelation chapter 18 and verse 17. In other words, that, that whore that rides the scarlet colored beast is mystery Babylon. And that kingdom will be destroyed at the second coming of Jesus Christ. See, I'm saying all this so that you get a better understanding of the book of Daniel. And the fact that all that God gave to, gave to Daniel in wisdom, revelation, and in knowledge hinges back on Daniel's ability to eat a plant-based diet. Because he ate what God wanted him to eat. God showed him revelation. God showed him visions. God gave him wisdom, knowledge, and skill. Because Daniel went back to God's eating plan and he refused to eat the king's meat. And we know it worked for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When Daniel gave uh, the, the king uh, this revelation, the vision of the dream, Daniel was promoted and he was put over all the province of Babylon. Daniel was promoted. I said Daniel was promoted. Daniel was given a higher office. And, and that's why when it came down to the fiery furnace, Daniel wasn't with them because Daniel was already elevated to a higher position. But Daniel had requested that his, that his friends be also elevated to, 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 to a high position. Now, Daniel chapter 2, I think it's around verse number, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel 2 uh, verse 48, Daniel 2, 48. And, and the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the, governor, of the governors and over all the wise men of Babylon. And Daniel requested of the king that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, 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 over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Uh, but Daniel sat in the king's gate. In other words, Daniel said, how about raising my buddies up? How about promoting my friends? See, Daniel didn't, didn't, didn't forget about his friends because it was the corporate prayer that, bring that brought that revelation. They came together and corporately prayed and God revealed the secret. And, 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 and Chandrat, Meshach, and Abednego were promoted because they too refused to eat the, the bad food of the king. 
They refused to eat the bad food of the king. Now, now the benefit to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was that when the when the when king when the king threw them in that fiery furnace, they did not burn. Glory be to God. When the king threw them in the fiery furnace, because of the wisdom and the presence of God was on their life so strong, the fire could not destroy them. And chapter 3 is when they were thrown into the fiery furnace. You see, only three were thrown in. Daniel was already promoted. Now, because of their decision to not eat the king's food, the presence of God was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they did not die in that furnace. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because the presence of God all the power and the glory of God was on those guys' life. But I believe it goes all the way back to Daniel chapter 1. When Daniel purposed in his heart, Daniel 1.8, that he would not defile himself. Folks, these are benefits that we need that comes from eating a plant-based diet. You see, because it sets God's approval, that we're submitted to God, and God's presence and God's power and God's glory was with Daniel and his friends. Because I believe it all, I believe, I believe if they would have ate that king's food, probably none of this would have taken place. Daniel would have, they wouldn't have had the wisdom, they wouldn't have had the revelation, because the wrong food clogs up our ability to communicate with God. Because when we make the decisions to eat the way God wants us to eat, just like he told Jesus in, 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 in Isaiah 7, 15, I give you the ability to choose the the good and refuse the evil the ability to choose the good and refuse the evil why it hinges on us eating the way god wants us to eat folks it's not too much to sacrifice all we got to do is make the decision that we're going to get back to god's original eating plan and i believe we're going to see the gifts of the spirit like we've never seen it before you want more wisdom you want more knowledge you want more understanding make the decision to go back to eating a plant-based diet just like Daniel did. We call it the Daniel's fast, but this was not a fast. This, this was not just a fast. This was a lifestyle that Daniel adopted because I don't like using the word diet because everything, every time I hear diet, I think it sounds temporary to me. No, we've got to make this a lifestyle, a plant-based lifestyle. Amen. And I want you to know if you do it, I, I, I did it for 10 days. I, I did the 10 day challenge, just like Daniel told, 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 uh, 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 the, the, the king that was the, the prince that was over them test us for 10 days and after 10 days it, they proved to be better sharper more wiser their countenance even looked better glory to god hallelujah their faculties were in place and, and all increased in a positive manner because they refused to eat the bad food of the king folks we got to make decisions to get away from the bad food of the american diet and get back to eating the way God wants us to eat. Daniel did not eat meat. Daniel ate fruits, vegetables, and he drank water. And because he was obedient to God, God gave him wisdom, God gave him knowledge, God gave him understanding. And I would say God had the gifts of the Spirit operate through Daniel because he was willing to obey God in his eating. Folks, there are benefits to eating a plant-based diet. And it's connected to our spiritual walk and our spiritual understanding. And God is saying, we got to make that sacrifice. And we and, and we make that sacrifice, we receive these benefits. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. May you be motivated. May you be encouraged. And may you start your journey to getting to eating on eating a plant-based diet. Amen. And we got some more teaching on this. And we're going to show you from the word the benefits of it to motivate us, to motivate you and I that we've got to get back to God's eating plan and make it a lifestyle, folks. Make it a lifestyle, and the benefits will be ours. They had knowledge, they had wisdom, they had understanding, and they had protection. Hallelujah. And they had power with them. The angel of the Lord was with them. When Daniel was thrown in that lion's den, even the lion could not eat him because the presence and the power of God was there. God sent angels to protect him. Why? Because Daniel... And his friends obeyed God in their eating. It'll bring the presence of God. The power of God was there. The lion couldn't even eat Daniel in the lion's den that night. But I believe it all goes back. But Daniel making that decision, I will not defile myself by eating the king's food and drinking his wine. If we do it, presence and glory of God will be with us. 
And may the Lord bless you tonight. I hope this has helped you. I hope this has stirred you. I hope it has challenged you. I hope it has motivated you to get on your journey of eating a plant-based diet, which is getting back to eating the way God originally intended for mankind to eat. All the way back in Genesis 1, 27 through 29, Genesis 3, 18, he commanded a plant-based diet apart from any meat and God's going to be glorified. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. I thank you tonight, God, for your word. I thank you, God, you sent us to heal us and to deliver us from destruction. And Father, you said your people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And Father, we bind the spirit of the destroyer tonight. We bind the spirit of sickness, disease, cancer, diabetes, heart conditions, cardiovascular diseases. We bind it in Jesus' name and let the knowledge of God Go into your people tonight and help us to be doers of your word and not just hearers only. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hope you got something out of this tonight. I hope you be a doer of it. Start your journey. Amen. Got some more teachings coming in this area that we're going to look at the, the areas of what we should eat and why we should not eat the king's food. Amen. And if you don't know Jesus Christ tonight, repent of your sins. Ask him into your heart tonight and make him the Lord of your life. Ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He'll do just that. If you're not saved, you know, know, him, know him as your Savior, ask him into your heart tonight. Make a decision. You're going to come out of wickedness. And then you too will have the opportunity to live the long life, productive life, the abundant life that God wants for you all through knowing Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for your time tonight. And keep listening to the field of fire. we got more coming. And may the Lord continue to challenge you. And may he strengthen you on your journey to getting into a plant-based diet. Amen. The Bible says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can do it. And we're going to see the glory of God like we've never seen it before. Till the next video, keep yourself safe, keep yourself strong. In Jesus' name.